So this is Leonardo at Leonardo's Lens, and today we're going to talk about the Einstein 640WS by Paul C. Buff. Now the 640WS in the name uh, refers to its power level, 640 watts a second. Um, a lot more powerful than your speed lights, your small strokes. Um, the beautiful thing is it's about the same price. So not only do you get more power on the high end, at the lower end you get a much lower power setting and a very, very short flash duration. Now that's due to the IGBT circuitry uh, that you see there. What that does, as soon as your strobe goes off, it cuts the power uh, so it doesn't have any light tail at the end and you end up with a much shorter flash duration. Okay, so uh, I'm going to zoom out here so you can see the unit. Nice and portable. You can see it fits right into the palm of my hand. Good looking unit, I think. So let's get right into the menu here. I'm going to zoom in and First, I'll point out our little control panel here. We've got our power button here. Go ahead and turn that back on. And I'm sure you can hear when I turn that thing on, it gets a little noisy. There's a fan there that keeps it all cool. Basically, what we have here is a little computer that's got a strobe on the end. Uh, so it's pretty advanced. Okay, so here on the left side, we've got our function button. So we've got our two arrows that adjust through the menu. Um, we've got our LCD screen here. I'd say it's about two inches by three inches. A uh, nice four color screen there. Um, here's our test button, which we can fire the strobe. And here we've got the little red easy set button. What that does is return the strobe to its factory default settings. Uh, that way if you make a lot of changes you have a button, one button push to get back to a standard setting. Um, we've got our sync port here. Standard PC sync cable. Plugs right in there so you can plug that into your camera for triggering the strobe. Let's zoom out here and right here on top We've got a photo eye for uh, turning this unit into a slave. What that means is that if you have another flash connected to your camera, when that goes off, the slave unit will also go off and you'll get both strobes firing at once. Um, personally, it's nice to have in a pinch. You always want that available, but there are much... There are many more um, reliable ways of triggering, triggering your strobe. Uh, PC sync cable, you can do it wirelessly. And let's talk about that a little. So I'm going to tip this. And you can see the top of the unit. So what we have here is a screw, a thumb screw for sticking an um, umbrella post through the uh, hole there. We've got the slave trigger I was talking about. Here uh, we have a small little port for, looks like a mini or micro SD card. Apparently in the future, in case there are any firmware upgrades to this little computer we have here, uh, you'll be able to put that on an SD card, plug it right in, and update the system. So, uh... What's remaining here is the little port here for, I believe they call it the CyberSync system. Now what's nice about that, it's a little $30 receiver you can plug right into the top of the strobe. Uh, you have their CyberSync commander that will go on your camera and you can not only fire the strobe wirelessly, but you can control the power settings and all of the features from, from remotely from your camera. So let's go ahead and zoom in and take a look at the actual menu system here. Um, 
so your default screen and okay here's one caveat one if there's one complaint I have about this unit is that it defaults back to the uh, main screen here very quickly after you set a setting so uh, I, I can see the the point of that uh, the main thing you'll be doing on this screen is adjusting the power level so if you make a different type of adjustment it defaults right back here so you can always change your power level um, but when you're in a different menu sometimes you'll make a change and then it defaults back so quickly you, you've got to go through the entire menu again um, before you're you're back at that setting so let's take a look here on our main screen let's get in focus okay so on our main screen um, you can adjust the power as I said all the way from full power into tenth of a stop increments all the way down to a 256 of full power uh, go ahead and take a look here at our indicator so you can see here I'm at minus eight f-stops from full power uh, my color setting is at 5600 K and we'll talk about that a little bit more because uh, the one of the other beautiful things about this unit is if you stay in color mode your color will be constant at 5600 K no matter what power setting you set at um, at our lowest power setting which is 2.5 watts we can see here we are at an eight thousandth of a second now that's a pretty short flash duration good for freezing action and we'll get into that a little bit more later alright let's take a look at our menu system here next up is our modeling light status screen and the next one is where we actually adjust that modeling light so right now the modeling light is on full power that means no matter what you have the flash power setting at your modeling light is on full blast uh, get back there and our modeling light is off here our modeling light can be adjusted separately from where the uh, flash is set so you can see the yellow light there on the indicator screen I'm about half power for my flash power but my modeling light can be adjusted independently from that and on this one our modeling light goes up and down according to where our flash is at so I'll go back to the main screen and you can see when I adjust the flash the modeling light adjusts right along with it so what we have next is our slave detector so in this menu when that is on your photo eye here at the top I showed you earlier let's go ahead and zoom out just a little so the photo eye that's right here up top will be on and it will detect if another flash goes off in the room and it will fire this flash okay so this next mode is pretty important it's our mode selector now um, you see we're in color mode right now and our other mode is action mode so let's talk about color mode first in color mode you can see here our color setting is 5600 K and in color mode no matter what power you have your unit set at and let's go ahead and I'm going to adjust this all the way down so it's at 3.3 watts I'm going to bring it all the way up so it's at 640 watts and you'll notice that our color indicator stayed at 5600k um, nice feature if you're taking lots of shots of the same thing you want your color to be constant but let's talk about the other mode and that is action mode now in action mode you're going to give up that color constancy but where you're going to gain is a little bit more flexibility so let's go back up to our main screen I'll show you what I mean now notice I'm at about 5600 K when I'm at full power 
but as I go down you can see not only is my power setting changing but my color accuracy is changing also go all the way down to the uh, to the lowest power setting we're at 6400k but you got to notice here what our flash duration is it's at a 13,500th of a second now that's a really short flash duration very low power setting 2.5 watts a, set, a second so you can freeze action um, to an amazing level with this unit so our last setting here and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit we've got our radio frequency indicators I don't have the CyberSync system that we talked about a little bit earlier but I'll go ahead and bring this down as a reminder you would plug your CyberSync module there in the top the receiver put the transceiver on your camera and you can control this wirelessly including all of its functions so we have another thing to mention here and that is the light modification system on this thing so let's go ahead and zoom out and let's turn this around and you'll be able to see that what I have on the front of the strobe here is a seven inch sort of standard reflector mounted on that I've got uh, some barn doors I think I have a gel in there and this is how it connects to the front of the strobe we've got our lever here and when I activate that I can pull off the modifier and you can see uh, the front of the unit my modeling light is on the lowest setting there you can see that glowing a little bit now notice the teeth here we got four little teeth that retract when I activate the lever um, in the past I understand that there were some complaints about people actually losing their light modifier off the front of this thing so they redesigned it and I'll tell you that since I've had it haven't had any problems it's been a nice stable amount so what you do is bring the teeth in put whatever modifier you choose on the front of the unit until it's flush and let go and it's a nice secure fitting there okay so let's go ahead and wrap up what we have here is the Einstein 640 WS strobe um, if I were to give it a rating I would say this is a 9.5 out of 10 um, only a caveat I have is that the menu system can be a little cumbersome when you need to uh, change your settings quickly systems that are manual buttons only may be a little bit quicker but the strength of this menu system is that everything is so adjustable so it's always going to be a trade-off um, thinking about getting one I think the price is great about 500 bucks just for the strobe alone and of course there are many accessories that go along with this we'll talk about those a little bit later this is Leonardo from LeonardosLens.com Thanks for watching.